I'm not called to say what people would like to hear. I'm not called to say what tickles the ears of people. I am called to say what people need to hear. There's a difference between what people want to hear and there's a difference between what people need to hear. What people need to hear makes them uncomfortable and they would rather not hear it. They need a bold person like me with strong balls to say what needs to be said. People who, she, who say what people would love to hear make no difference in life. And I'm glad that I'm one of those few who will say things that would make other people not even decide to, to, to even decide not to come to church. Because I'm here, I'm not here to make you comfortable. I'm here to make you a conqueror. I've been, I'm finishing reading this book here. And I'd like the cameraman to bring, to zoom it in a bit. I'm just finishing reading this book. I've heard of this book. I looked for it. It's not available in South Africa. I had to go to Amazon in America to get it. It cost me 700 rand to get it. It's a very small book. But I don't regret having gotten this book. The title of this book is How to Make a Negro Christian. Now, after having read this book, I realized that it doesn't talk really about, it talks a little bit about how to make a black man a Christian. It talks more about why is it important to make a black man a Christian. And very few books have broken my heart like this book. I will not lie to you. Very few books have broken my heart like this. Because this book firstly brought to my attention that we did not choose to be Christians. Christianity was imposed on us with the voice, with the most vile violent inhuman methods that you can perceive i'm not one who runs away from such information i go for it i look at it straight in the eye and i deal with it this book also clearly identifies the fact that for black people to become Christians it was more for the advantage of white people than it was for the advantage of black people it served the best interest of white people for me to be a Christian than it does save my interest another point it talks about this guy called Dr. Reverend Charles Colcock Jones. Dr. Charles Colcock Jones was a, was a slave master who had plantations, about six, seven plantations. And in each plantation, there were slaves. There were black slaves. Now, in the north, he was, at that time, black people were not even allowed to worship God black people were not even allowed to be exposed to the message of Christianity because these were savages these were animals now this Colcock Jones was one of the first people who gathered the people in his plantations black people and started sharing the message of Jesus during that time 
there were a lot of slave insurrections meaning black people who were slaves would wake up in the middle of the night kill all the white people that were in the plantations burn their houses and run away they knew they would be caught they would be killed it didn't matter to them there were there are more than 400 slave insurrections that are recorded in america this is the guy who started saying let me gather black people and let me teach them about jesus let me teach them about the gospel and he realized this the more he taught them the bible the more he taught them the bible the more tamed the more docile the more the more um diluted they became the more he taught them the gospel the more humble they became the more he taught them the gospel the more a threat the less a threat they became to white people and he's one of the few people who never had a slave insurrection in his plantations now he took it upon himself to teach white people he said do not be afraid to teach black people the message of Christianity because it makes them less militant it makes them docile it makes them humble it makes them controllable And he went around the whole of the south and he taught them the message and he taught them the importance of bringing people who are black people to come and listen to the message of Christianity now during those days black people were not allowed to read they were not allowed to learn to write so what he said to them was give them oral instruction so it was only oral instruction came across one sentence even if you didn't hear anything I said I want you to listen to this this statement broke my heart it says on page 74 it is certain that the salvation of one soul will more than will more than outweigh all the pain and the woo of their capture and transportation and subsequent resident amongst us. I'll say it again, explain it, and then I'll shut up. It is certain that the salvation of one nigger's soul will more than outweigh all the pain and the wound of their capture and transportation and subsequent incidents and accidents. What this means is that if one nigger, one kafa, becomes a Christian, it will more than outweigh the 30 million plus people that we kidnapped in their homes, in their counties, put them on the deck of the ship under the most inhuman conditions where more than half of them died and we got there in America we enslaved them we raped them we lynched them we whipped them we treated them like nobodies since the salvation of one nigger will more than outweigh the pain of more than 
50 million people. How dare you trivialize our pain like that? How dare you get to a point where you trivialize our experience As you worship God as a Christian, you must always remember to embrace Christianity with a pinch of salt. Be strong in your mind. Be tough in your mind. And refuse to be an object which is just a means to an end. I'll talk about other aspects of this book again next week. I'm angry. I'm furious. I'm furious at the way white people think we are pawns to be played around with. I'm furious. I'm mad. One day, one day, Africa will arise and will bring a total end to this. One day, Africa will arise and will cause this to be just a memory. And I intend to, I intend to make a huge contribution towards that with that said I want to say I am undeniably intentionally deliberately and unapologetically an African and I will not be swayed from that of a plot just to make me subservient and docile. The gaffer at the plot. Clap hande for the gaffer. against what what this black man is saying I don't say what is popular I say what is liberating I make no apologies for it your great grandchildren will thank me because you are too polluted in your minds by the agenda of white people your great grandchildren will thank me Amanda! Amanda!